lived long enough, you remember the terrible, tragic Tuesday of September 11, 2001. You remember where you were going, where you, what you were doing. The day before, I was flying out of LaGuardia Airport with my mother and my brother and his wife, who I'd recently married. We were all going on a honeymoon to Martha's Vineyard out of Massachusetts. And the pilot got on the plane and said, the Twin Towers are right in front of us. If you want to stand up, you're the only four passengers. You can stand up and you can touch the Twin Towers. And we all did. The next day, the Twin Towers were but one. That's how I remember 9-11. We all have our stories. We've been listening to all the stories, the broadcasts, the papers. And since I'm a devotee of USA Today, they had a special insert in each one of each day. They were all excellent. I'd like to talk in particular my reflection about the priest, Father Michael Judge, a Franciscan priest. He was 68 years of age, vivacious, heroic chaplain of New York City Fire Department. He refused to flee to safety after the commercial jetliners hijacked by suicide Jadis, who crashed the Twin Towers in the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan in New York. He wore his white fire fighter's hat he had a black coat on. He prayed for the firefighters as they swiftly attended to the wounded and the collapse of the South Tower. All of a sudden, a tsunami of rubble burst from the North Tower, and it was a plume of smoke. We all remember the picture of the lifeless body of Father Michael Judge being carried out in that rubble of the grief-stricken emergency workers. It has been called Michelangelo's America Pieta. And five years later, a documentary was made of Father Michael Judge entitled, as they dubbed him, The Saint of 9-11. Let's look at Father Michael Judge. In his diary, he professes that he was gay. He was a recovering alcoholic. He wore a hair tail. He had a shamrock in the middle of his back of a tattoo. He was well known in the city to the homeless he ministered to the people with addictions, to the victims of AIDS. He spent day and night in silent meditation, regularly praying the rosary. He carried $1 bills in his pockets to give to homeless people in his walks. He volunteered by ministering to dying patients, by wash, AIDS patients, by washing their feet and kissing their foreheads. There's a college dorm in New York named after Father Michael Judge. And the New York Waterways Ferry carries office workers every day across the New York Harbor with Father Judge's name on it. Father Judge's traits is he was strikingly handsome. He spoke to diverse cultures. 
He had a magnetic personality, a quick, witty storyteller. He had a wonderful sense of humor, gigantic hands, they described, and the most generous Franciscan priestly heart. According to the former New York Daily News columnist, Michael Davey, Father Judge was the Babe Ruth of priests. He befriended Father Judge, and he wrote a biography in 2008 entitled The Book of Michael. The Surprising Life and Heroic Death of Father Michael Judge. You can get it on Amazon. It's on sale for $20.45. I highly recommend it. There's been over 20 some books written about Father Michael Judge who I'm speaking about. There's necklaces of him. There's documentaries about him. At his funeral, Father Michael Duffley said this of Father Michael Judge at his eulogy. The next few weeks, we're going to have name after name. Name after name of people who will be brought out of the bubble. Father Michael Judge is going to be on the other side of death to greet each of them. He's going to greet them with a big Irish smile. He's going to take them by the arm and the hand and say, welcome, I want to take you to my father. And he will continue doing in death what he couldn't do in life. Some Catholics believe He's the true saint, and are actively pleading his cause before the Vatican in Rome to canonize him. Father Michael Judge, like who he gave his life an invitation for 800 years before, St. Francis of Assisi, was the founder of his order. St. Francis, like Father Michael Judge, tried to spread peace and joy hope and love, the message of Jesus to every person he met, whether in the church or outside on the sidewalk. Father Michael Judge's tombstone is in the friar's plot of the Holy Sepulchre Cemetery in Toa, New Jersey. Father Michael Judge, for all of us, is someone who certainly denied himself who is willing to face death to bring hope of God to others. He was but one. It is often said, be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible that a person ever reads. The older I get, the more I believe that's true. Jesus' way, as he's going to Jerusalem, he predicts three passions. It's the way of the cross. There's no other way. You can try to take shortcuts in life, but they won't lead you to victory. His sacrifice of his own life frees every believer from sin and death. Jesus gives every one of us in every century a marvelous invitation. Do you want to be my follower? If you do, these are the requirements. Deny yourself. Take up your daily crosses. Follow in my footsteps. Surrender your life for my life. Give your gospel for my gospel. And up and down the centuries, courageous Christians have embraced Jesus and taken his words to heart. They have denied themselves pleasures, homes, loved ones, and even family life for something greater. To imitate the master and to walk in his footsteps. There is no other lifestyle ultimately satisfying for Jesus' There's no other lifestyle that can permanently, permanently change the world in which we live than Jesus' gospel. 
sorrow and suffering and constraint are all part of life. Jesus doesn't promise us that we'll be delivered from difficulties and hardships and tragedies, but he does promise us that he'll be with us in the struggle. Jesus' resurrection from the dead assures the reward of eternal life for all evil. He's defeated every enemy. The last enemy is death. He promised us beyond all of our imagining a new heaven. If we are faithful to believing in his cross. Maybe after 20 years we could ask a simple question. Am I living a life that is pleasing to God and helpful to my neighbor? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., civil rights activist, great preacher as a minister, said, if a person hasn't discovered something that they'll die for, they aren't fit to live. Let me repeat it. If a person hasn't discovered something that they will die for, they aren't fit to live. In the silence of the somber 9-11, we remember, we pray, we mourn. When we come to the end of our pilgrimage, reach heaven, God will ask us, 